Okay, I'm gonna wait a couple of seconds to see if anybody joins. Alex Galchenyuk just got traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Alex sent that in the group chat and the way that I cackled, inhuman. Like we literally talked about this in this morning's podcast. Alex Galchenyuk, all the stuff there. And then like the premier example of this being the Mark Strait trade that we talked about in this morning's podcast. Philly and Pittsburgh couldn't trade together because they hate each other. So they joined, um, so they like went through Tampa. Like, there is nothing I find funnier than this. Just like in my head, imagining this man's having to drive from Toronto all the way down no, to North Carolina. Ottawa knew. <laughs> Ottawa knew this was happening. I don't think that. I think that's why they like. He was already in Toronto. So like, I think Ottawa knew, and that's why like they're gonna drive. Um, we'll drive to Scotia Bank Arena tomorrow. I feel like the Leafs love third and fourth line forwards. Like Alex Alchenyuk is a perfect fit. He does. He's not expected to like do anything. <laughs> no. He can just hang out there. There are so many comments just like on the original tweet being like, why did we do this? And that was my first like reaction was why? Well, I think Caroline and Toronto are both like spots that kind of make sense for Alex Galchenyuk, like from an Alex Galchenyuk standpoint. Because like for Toronto, this doesn't make any sense. Like, why are you paying this dude to do nothing? But yeah. from an Alex Galchenyuk point, it's like you're not expected to do much here. Be a third, fourth liner, figure out your game again with a great coach, get back into like who you're supposed to be. And I don't think Alex Galchenyuk will ever like be like a third overall pick in the sense that we now know third overall picks to be. But mm-hmm. like, I think he'll be like a decent second liner. I feel like Alex Galchenyuk has like the yips. He's so in his head that he's not living yeah. up the expectation that like he doesn't know how to play hockey anymore. And I feel kind of bad for him. And then he's like on Twitter, like reading and responding to all the mean things we say about him. I forgot about that. <laughs> Alex Yachinik has a burner in Toronto. is about to eat him alive. Alex Yachinik is very into reading everything about him. And so, like, yeah. Toronto is a weird place. Like, I don't know. Someone commented on this. Bounce around from team to team. There is a reason. It's not, like, an attitude reason. The reason is that he's just not as good as the, like, as a third overall pick which is what yeah. people expect Alex Galchenyuk to be. He doesn't and live he's... up to those expectations. I mean, Toronto gave up absolutely nothing for him. <laughs> so when is this guy going to travel the world? In the middle of a panoramic? I agree that Galchenyuk is not an NHL caliber player right now. I think he has the potential to be again. And I think he's just so in his head about like who he was supposed to be and not being that player, which really isn't his fault. That's more on Montreal. Like Montreal, I think, puts so much insane pressure on everybody who they deem the future. And then that never pans out because they just don't have the resources to make them into that sort of player. And so I think Galchenyuk is just so far in his head that it's going to take a lot to get him out of it. And I think being a third, fourth liner on Toronto, if he's willing to do that, can be what fixes him. The problem is that I feel like Alex Galchenyuk has such an attitude, which we've seen on Twitter and his burners and responding to people, that I don't know if he'd be willing to like take a step back. Like, I don't think his pride can handle it. Like, I think he's such a guy that he had, like, he his entire life, he was the best. And now he's just not, and he doesn't know how to handle that. And he doesn't know how to, like, take a step back and get back to that place and kind of understand that he's never going to be the best and being okay with that and being the best that he can be which sounds like such like a cliche like you're gonna be the best you but I think that's like kind of what Alex Yonjin has to do moving forward literally if he wasn't a number three overall pick this would be a nothing trade Parker Parker said that we're re- relearning how to be good at a sport when you get bad for a while it's hard for like high schoolers definitely hard for people who get paid for it Absolutely. And I think it's also like learning a new game. Alex Galchenyuk's game has severely changed. He's got to learn how to play it. And I really think like what helped Alex Galchenyuk a lot is like even just changing positions for a bit. Like he's been a sink, he's been a center his whole life, like or a left wing, like learn how to be a right wing, like completely switch it up. Yeah. Someone on Twitter was like, the Leafs are going to, is going to give him different facing stick. Hey Philly. And he's going to mm-hmm. score 40 goals. I think that's like, I could see that happening not def- like necessarily giving him a different stick but, but like, like switching up switching him up to his off wing to try and reteach him how to play yeah. hockey the way that the Leafs wanted to play hockey to the best of his ability and I don't mm-hmm. know if that's something they'll do because I feel like that's something you do for somebody that you have a lot invested in and now let's go Chandler's on like a one year like basically league minimum deal that they traded nothing for like and I think a lot of it will have to do with his attitude going in if he's like got a good attitude and he's willing to work I think they will do anything for him because the Leafs have those type of resources that they can spend on a guy yeah. who's not going to be there for very long if, if he's not not willing to do the work they're not going to spend the resources oh, no nope. but I, I feel like toronto could be good for him but also 
homie again likes to he, read everything that's said about him and yeah. i feel like he's gonna he's very much in the position where he's going to like get out what he puts in i don't know if he's willing to put in he's very much like he is a victim of his own situation right now and so if he's gonna be like boo hoo, boo is me why aren't i playing with austin matthews well it's like fuck you bro you need to earn playing with austin matthews the yeah. other thing is that i just thought of is is Alex Gatchaniak another Casper Capita? Same kind of player, same kind of history of attitude issues. Could be interesting. Same like, I know I'm good, so I don't have to try. And I think Alex Gatchaniak is a player who for so long, like in Montreal, he was just given those things. He got to Pittsburgh and was given Evgeny Malkin. When he got to Arizona, he was given that top line. And then in Minnesota, it started to go bad. And he crumbled. Is he willing to take the steps necessary to be the best player that Alex Galchenyuk to beat can be with the Toronto Maple Leafs? And I don't know if he is. Alex, can I switch you and Megan out? Ex- explain the VC stuff. Like, where does VC sit in the lineup? Why do you think Alex Galchenyuk is pushing him out? Um, okay, so right now, VC is, he's playing on the fourth line today for the first time because he has not been good on the third line. When Thornton first went out and they moved Hyman up, they had him up with Tavares and Nylander and he wasn't doing anything there. Mm-hmm. He hasn't been doing anything on the third line. He's literally just like a body at this point. So that's why he's playing on the fourth line. And I think they're just looking for something that's not VC and also to provide depth in case we have anybody who who's gets injured again and also looking at the Marlies you had um they only have 15 forwards because of the taxi squad requirement so they probably also want to be able to send more people down because they have a lot of people in Europe why did we just claim him on wa- waivers why did we give him give them two players for him that's my question Kyle why <laughs> how do you think he's gonna handle being in Toronto he no not well but he's like been in Montreal like he's done this before I don't think it's gonna go well for him I don't know like probably yeah. like Eugene Melnick was like you can't trade one of our players to Toronto so he had to send him to Carolina to come back up. He kind of knew that you would get more from Car- from Carolina for Alex Galchenyuk. Like you got Ryan Dezingle. Like I think Ryan Dezingle, mm-hmm. while not great, is a better player than Alex Galchenyuk. So you got more from Carolina than you were going to get from Toronto for him. I mean, like I don't really like Korshkov being the one traded, but Korshkov was like pretty solid. He was actually, I think, the Marley's best player last year. The Leaf prospect pool feels so deep and like never ending to me that it's like, oh, we'll give up this like number five guy and we've got like ties for number six I think it's also more flexible if he's played wing and center like and I'm thinking they maybe want to move Engvall this is just like a little bit of insurance center depth Alex doesn't want to hear that he where they're gonna move Engvall but... everybody has been a center in Montreal that's true but like Alex Galchenyuk was the OG yeah the center for the Montreal Canadiens the future mm-hmm. of the Montreal Canadiens so we're like Alex Galchenyuk Jonathan Druin Max Domi and now you Ferry cooking the Emmy <laughs> who hasn't been the future of the Montreal Canadiens it's actually a curse to be the future of the Montreal <laughs> Canadiens <laughs> Leafs Twitter is like melting down over this and I'm like it's really not that big of a deal guys like he's gonna be like a bottom tier player like he's not coming in to play with Austin Matthews yeah he's coming in to sit in the press box or play in the fourth line depending on if he's willing to work that's... like that's the difference in between the Leafs and like basically every other team that Alex Gachenyuk has had to play for is that like back then like Alex Gachenyuk had was in the power position he had his name he had the fact that he was a third overall pick he was the center and the future and the fast guy and he is just so not that player anymore that his name holds no value and his game holds no value and so it's Sheldon Keithway or the highway and Alice Galchenyuk I don't think has ever been in that position before so we'll see how he handles it and I don't think it's going to be well but if he pulls his head out of his ass and decides to be a team player I think that Toronto is a place where Alice Galchenyuk can shine so it's just about what is Alice Galchenyuk willing to do